Greetings to you, beloved viewers of this program. Once again, you are watching today's edition of the program Asake Online, a program that explores issues that are happening in our communities with regards to development. Once again, today your presenter is Bakit Sanan Dube, and with me here I have uh, the Bulawayo coordinator for YMCA, uh, Bulawayo. Uh, welcome, uh, Marcos. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, briefly tell us about your organization, uh, Young Men's uh, Christian uh, Association. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Young Men's Christian Association is an organization that is in focus. Uh, we a Christian organization where we draw our membership from different churches. We don't work with churches per se, we work with uh, Christians from different denominations. So we draw our membership and our membership uh, is uh, uh, from young as 10 years. We've got categories of membership, we've got the white kids, we've got the white teens, we've got the youth, we've got the adults, and then we've got the associates that include other organizations that are interested to work with YMC. So what is the mission really of and the vision of your organization? Maybe you can take us through. Okay, um, our mission is the YMC. Um, is to contribute towards the spiritual, physical, intellectual, cultural, economic and social well-being of young people and the marginalized in the community, work towards the empowerment of young people. And then our vision is to be a god fearing um, membership driven, people focused, gender sensitive, self-sustaining and development oriented organization. Um, our, in, in a nutshell, we empower young people for the African Renaissance. That's our vision as the whole YMC. And then we've got values that include love, hope, faith, honesty, equality, integrity, uh, amongst others. So uh, perhaps uh, I would also love the people who are watching this uh, program to get the background to your organization, to YMCA, when was it formed, and uh, what were the circumstances uh, surrounding its formation, things uh, along those lines. Okay, the YMCA was founded uh, based on the Paris Spaces and the Kampala Principles um, of 1855 and 1973 respectively. Maybe I will read them. The Paris Spaces says the Young Men's Christian Association seeks to unite those young men regarding Jesus Christ as God and Savior, according to the Holy Scriptures. The desire to be his disciples in their faith and in their life and to associate their efforts for the extension of its kingdom amongst them. This was adopted, adopted by the World Alliance of YMCA's in, 19, in 1855 in the Paris basis. And then the Kampala principles also say it recognizes the character of the YMCA in the world today. This act of acknowledging the Paris basis lays upon the various associations and their members as fellow workers with God such imperative as to work for equal op opportunities to work for and maintain an environment in which relations among people are characterized by love and understanding, to work for and maintain conditions within the YMCA and in society, in its organization and institu institutions, which call for honesty, depth and creativity. It also develops and maintains leadership and program patterns, which exemplify the va varieties and depth of Christian experience to work for the development of the whole person. And this was adopted uh, by the YMCA Alliance of YMCA's in Kampala, Uganda in 1973. And in the national, the YMCA was formed by a young man by then called Williams, George Williams. So this young man from the history, they say he was, uh, he looked at the young people that were um, fighting in the war, the, the, the First World War, and um, he was moved by the way these young people were not supported in terms of the social, in terms of the soul, in terms of the mind. So he developed the YMCA so that the young people are then capacitated in terms of their emotions, in terms of building them up and shaping them after they go through the, the, the physical and the social and the emotional um, challenges in the war. So he formed the YMCA Joshua Williams. So uh, looking at the activities, especially let's uh, narrow down to YMCA uh, Blawai uh, region. So what are some of the activities that this uh, organization is doing here in this region? Okay, the YMCA in Bulawayo, um, we are the, the only association in Matebele and actually. So it's stretched in both the Mat South and Mat North in Bulawayo. 
So in terms of our programs, we work with young people in and out of school, where we reach them with the outreach programs. Uh, we, we have white labs in schools, we work with our formal schools, we work with the private colleges. We then talk about uh, our power space, where we provide a space for young people to air out whatever they are, the challenges they have, and then the, the space provides them with that platform where they share, they help each other to grow. So it's a power space where they, they are empowered to, to open out and share and build each other. So we have those clubs. And then we have the camps and outings where the young people go out uh, in a particular place where they choose for themselves and then they have different activities that go on. The camps are not just for them to go out and have fun, but they go out to build each other. We have a paid program when we go to camps where they, they learn, they play, they grow, and it's also spiritual, they grow even spiritual. And then we have um, the gender programs where we work with young people in terms of gender-based violence, in, in terms of uh, we had a program where we term transformative masculinity, where we are saying the young men should uh, actually respect women and uh, be the role models, where we are looking forward to reorient, reshape and refine, redefine how young people, especially the young men, look at a woman. So that program, that program was looking at capacitating the young person, especially the boy child, to take opportunities and to be responsible. Um, we also have um, programs where we, we do entrepreneurship to take the young person to, to, to actually fend for themselves, to, to do something for themselves instead of just sitting down. So we, we teach them how to do projects such as uh, dishwash making, we teach them to do projects such as recycling where they use uh, chipuku bottles to make stools like the ones that were sitting on top. And they also do like these ones that they use where they use them. Uh, so we train them to do these bangles as young people. We train them to use trash like this is it's, um, from the trash that like they use the um, uh, bone paper to use this a basket so we can keep our things in there. So we just train the young people to be capacitated to do those things. So uh, looking at uh, maybe uh, the way the, your communities uh, that you are working with, the, the way they react to the programs as you uh, engage them, what comment can you pass towards the reception especially that you've received so far in the communities that you are working with? Okay, um, it, it's been a good reception. It's difficult of course to mobilize people in the community, but it's good. It's a good reception. I forgot to mention one of the programs that we did is um, we built a mother's shelter in Madobo district, Natisa Clinic. So it's a waiting mother's shelter. So in terms of reception, I would use that as a model. Like when we went to the, to the rural district council with the project, we approached them, we worked with the clinic. So the, the community took up the responsibility of mobilizing, like we are mobilizing the, 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 the local things that are needed, like the quarry, the water, the pit sand. They did that without payment. So the community took up the initiative of mobilizing those things. The little money that was mobilized from the African Union, it then uh, it was used to buy materials from like the cement and pay maybe the labor for the builder. But the, the villagers took up that responsibility to bring in the materials that are, are, are found within their community. And then as we work with young people, sometimes it's difficult because the young people like these days, they expect a program where they get money out of it. So it's kind of like difficult to mobilize them because they first they ask, what is, it, what is there for me? Uh, do I get something out of it? But then, uh, because we use young people to reach them, then they also maybe have a way to bring them in. So it's not that easy, but we find a way to bring them in. Yes. Uh, so maybe apart from Madopo, maybe you can give us an outline of the other communities that you are working with, especially in this region, uh, in, in the Matebelele region. Okay, um, the other programs are for, they happened maybe some years back. Um, we had programs that happened in Lubani where they were doing the drought power project, where they were buying the, like donkeys, they were buying the, 
the, the, the, the cultivators, they, they were empowering the community, the drought power project. Um, and then some years back also, they also helped communities in Bait Bridge that were affected by the cyclone, I, I think it was 2002 or so. So our national office, the Harare office, was the one that was spearheading that program. So we have had also, in terms of, um, we built a, 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 a family in Kezo, was also assisted to build uh, a, a, how, a home, the, it was an orphan, um, a, a child hated family, so they were assisted to build a home there. So those are some of the programs that the YMCA chips in. And then we, all, we have also paid school fees for them, for some students at some point. So we, if we get some funding, we also assist in terms of payment of school fees, buying books, um, something like that. And then uh, the, the maternal home that I mentioned, after building it up, we also donated the blankets we also painted the place. That was done in 2013-2014. So uh, maybe without straying uh, that much, uh, looking at the, uh, the involvement of YMCA, especially in the, uh, in the just the ended cyclone it died, uh, what, how were you involved in this uh, cyclone? Okay. Um, it is still in the in the in the shelves uh, or maybe in the pipeline because right now we have sent out the call from our members to say we are mobilizing whatever we will get then we will donate so we have sent out the call to our members and the communities that we work with in our different branches. YMC have got different branches in Zimbabwe. So we mobilize from Bulawayo, from Kadoma, from Chekut, from Magare, from Tanda, and then we will then post them there. Perhaps uh, looking at uh, really uh, maybe there are also certain programs, especially I realize that uh, you usually have an exchange program, especially with uh, other countries. Uh, youth from this uh, country go to other countries and those from other countries come uh, this side. Maybe you can take us through that program in order for us to entice maybe a lot of youth who are watching this program right now. Okay, um, the, the YMC in Bulawayo or YMC in Zimbabwe, we are part of the Young Advocates for Change program, which is a program that empowers a young person to think positive in terms of what is happening around them, be it the the municipality budget, are they participating? So it empowers them to be citizens, not to be subjects in whatever they are they are doing. So the program is being um, coordinated by our regional office, which is the Africa Alliance of YMCAs, and it brings together around seven countries, if I'm not wrong, which includes Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, uh, Madagascar, uh, Norway, um, I've forgotten another two, the other two. So they, they, they come together and then they, 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 they train these young people how they should conduct themselves within the community. So when they are posted in a country, they are not coming to, to change. They are coming to learn and also teach whatever skills they also have learned. For example, the chairs that were sitting on top, they are made of chipoko bottles. And then they, we just saw uh, the expense that is there is that the covers just to, to make them neat. But it's the ch chipuku bottles, then the sedative to, to, to make them like you to, to be able to sit on top. So it's a skill that was brought by the young people through the exchange program. And then also, we all, also started a program, um, Popoma High School, like the, the, the it's a flying garden where they are teaching the young people to, to plant uh, vegetables in a small space. They are using containers, they are using the car tires. And that project is just to sustain uh, maybe the, from the discussion with the school, they are saying that we sell the, the, the proceeds and maybe pay for one or two kids. So it's the skills that they bring in, the capacitation that they, they learn. When they go back, they also introduce what they learn in Zimbabwe to their own countries. And they also teach the young people there in terms of our culture and what we do as, a, as Zimbabwe YMC. So uh, throughout uh, the process of working uh, with communities, what are some of the challenges that you've come across? Um, in terms of the exchange program? Yes, in terms of uh, the exchange program and generally the programs that you are conducting here in Zimbabwe. Okay, in terms of the exchange program, we haven't really faced the challenges because 
when these young people come in, they fit within the community. We identify a mentor amongst our young people, like we tell them a mentor who will be taking them around so that they are not astray, they learn, they, they are taught the language so that they are able to converse with the other young people. So they get to have lessons to learn the language. So it's not been difficult because we go with them. They are not going like on their own. And then in terms of working with other programs within the community, the community is receptive in terms of programs. As long as uh, we are following the channels of going through the councillors, going through the gatekeepers, it's, it hasn't been a challenge. Like what, when these young people come in, we introduce them even to the law enforcers, like we go with them to the ZRP office, we introduce them to the relevant department so that they know that they are young people that are within the community. So as long as we follow the right channels, we haven't really had challenges in terms of working with the community. So uh, maybe without really uh being astray, uh, let's uh, look at your success stories. Uh, what are some of the success stories that you wish to share as an organization? Okay, um, for us, building a maternal home is one of the key things that we did. Um, we got the funding from the African Union and then we built the maternal home. That, that's a program that is able to sustain itself because after building, we hand it over to the community. So it's, a, it's, it's really an achievement for us. And then in terms of um, initiating the transformative masculinity program, that was a, 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 a success for us because it was a new program where young people or maybe the community were not really like knowing about it. So we initiated that and I, I, we have seen some organizations that have started talking about transformative masculinity programs, but we initiated it as, as YMCA. And then maybe like uh, even the, the stools program, like we initiated the stools making program where we teach young people the skill. It's, it's a skill that we, we are saying it's new to us, it's new to the community because people are, are, are used to the chipugu bottles being just thrown around. But for it to be a chair and you sit on top of it, it's like, yeah, it can be, you, you recycle and use things. That's a, a, a learning for us. Maybe uh, talking of uh, the, the stools, uh, especially with regards to the environment, how have they contributed in environmental uh, uh, preservation? Yes, it, it, it's, it's, a, it, it's a good way in terms of going um, to, to preserve the environment and uh, contributing towards the clean environment. Because like, uh, if you are to dispose them, it's either you bend them or then you cause a lot of uh, the, 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 the smoke and what, what, what. But when you use them like the way we've used them, it's like you, you are then recycling to make a good product. Um, you, you don't use a lot of resources to have it, and uh, you don't make the environment like dirty. So you are keeping the environment clean and at the same time having a good product out of it. Maybe to take you back a little, uh, generally speaking, uh, a lot of people are of the view that uh, when you bring uh, programs, especially that concern youths, they are sometimes, they, they exercise what we call apathy. They are not forthcoming to this program. How has been your, uh, your experience with working with young people so far? I think young people are very are very difficult to work with. It's, it's a community that you, you really need to engage for them to come on board. Um, there are some programs that we have targeted institutions and it has made it easier for us to, to do our programs. For example, the clubs that we have, we work with institutions, we work with churches, we work with uh, schools, we work with private colleges. So if it's an institution, it's more easier than when you are going to the community. So you, you, you really need to have like maybe provide some refreshments so that at least after having a forum or a discussion with them and then they have that encouragement. Um, as you go forward, some of the young people, they, 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 they appreciate because if they get the skills, like after we teach them to do the beats, it's a skill that we don't take away from them. If they take it up, then they are able to do and fend for themselves. So you say 50-50, you know that they may come, they may not come but you still go out there. So maybe uh, talking about uh, the lessons as an organization that you have learned, uh, that you wish to share with the other organizations that are in the same line of uh, operation or others that wish to also come on board, uh, what are those lessons that you wish to share with them? 
it's very difficult given our economy, but one of the lessons that um, makes YMCA very different is working with volunteers. So it's not necessarily that we, we, we pay them to be volunteers. They volunteer their time, they volunteer their treasure, they volunteer their talent into the YMC. So as we work with communities, sometimes to, to, to grow, maybe improve the communities, we, we need a lot of volunteers on board. So maybe that's one of the lessons that we have learned as the YMC, to, to work with volunteers and, and capitalize on their skills and their talents and their treasure sometimes. And it has built the YMCA up. Yes, uh, maybe. so what is your message, especially to other organizations, therefore, uh, that are working with communities? Um, it's good to partner so that we don't do double tipping. Uh, I think if we are to partner with, uh, with a lot of organizations and come together, it will strengthen the way we do our programming. If we have an organization that is also working with young people, the YMCA then partners with them that will make the programming more strengthened and maybe reach a wider mileage than it is doing now. Perhaps uh, your message to the youth? Uh, YMCA is open for any young person willing to come on board. Um, we grow them physically, we grow them mentally, we grow them emotional, or emotionally. So we encourage young people to come and join the YMCA. Uh, currently we are located at Ndumbani Housing Office, uh, office number six and number nine. They can come on board and join the YMCA and be part of the members and grow the movement. Yes, uh, maybe before we even uh, uh, roll out, uh, I realized that uh, you mentioned earlier on that as you go into the communities, you teach uh, youths on uh, gender-based violence. Uh, according to your analysis and your understanding and your experience of gender-based violence cases, uh, what did you find in those communities concerning gender-based violence? How was it there? Okay, um, YMC works uh, on gender uh, programs. Uh, we work very closely with the Minister of uh, Gender, Minister of Women Affairs. Uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, we work with other organizations. Um, the the, the gender-based violence within the communities, the, 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 the rate is still there. Um, there is still that um, cultural, the, the cultural belief that um, women are not supposed to talk about how they are abused. Uh, people still believe that they can they, some of the things don't need to be discussed in public, it's a family matter. So there are still those cases where you find that women, they know that if we talk about this, it's an issue, you can't talk about it. So more outreaches will help in terms of uh, capacitating those that are abused, whether it's a man or woman, to, to, to talk about the issues and not bulk it up. Because the more the, the issues are talked about, the more awareness people will be aware of what is happening and probably the, the, the rate will then go down in terms of the abuses that are happening, in terms of the, of the rape cases that are happening and all the issues around gender-based violence. Yes, uh, actually that brings us to the next session to say, uh, so what therefore as an organization is your message to all these stakeholders that are involved, especially in GPV, that is to say the men, uh, women and girls themselves, even youths. The message is um, for the men to come together. The men, I mean the woman, the male, the girl, and the boy. Um, if we tackle the program and not say this is, uh, like the YMCA will say, we are bringing together the boys and the girls. And when we discuss when they are together, it's got more strength than when you separate them. Yes, there are some programs where they need to be separated. But when you talk about the issues of abuse, we, we need the man to understand also and not sideline him and expect him to know. Because some of the challenges that make the, the boys maybe violent is because they are left behind and we support the girl child. And when the girl child is more empowered, but the girl child doesn't take decisions, taken by the boy child because the boy is the man that's what society expects so we need to make sure the two of them are capacitated in terms of understanding their roles within a family or within a setup so that they, they know where they are supposed to chip in as a, as a family
Yes, uh, we realize that there are a lot of people uh, at this hour who are watching this uh, program. Uh, so what will be your parting shot and any other who you wish to share with the people who are with the viewers of this program right now? Um, I want to encourage everyone to respect each other. I think if we are able to respect each other as, um, as a community, as Zimbabweans, as individuals, if you respect the, the person next to you, then we are building a good and respectable society. So I encourage everyone to respect, yeah, to grow and respect each other. Thank you so much. Thank you. You were watching as the program Asake Online, a program that explores issues that are happening in our communities with regards to development, it human rights, agriculture, education, and other developmentally related issues. Uh, today we were with YMCA Blawayo, and we explored a lot of issues that youth are doing, including uh, uh, to using uh, empty boxes of Chibuku that is called the super to make stools. Uh, we are going to meet again next time. Hope you enjoyed watching this program. Thank you.